Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel, it's Lisa. Okay, I've got to confess, I've got a little bit of an ink problem. Yes, I do. You guys, I have so much ink, I don't even know where to begin. This video is going to be a long, rambly video. I don't like to usually make those kind of videos, they drive me nuts. I like to kind of be as concise as possible. <clears throat> Sometimes I probably don't. Uh, succeed as much as I think I do but I think my videos are fairly concise but this one is going to be a long ramble because I'm going to try to determine from all of these lovelies which ones are my top let's say 10 because I've got a lot let's just face it um, I'm kind of gonna go through I'm not gonna swatch I have swatched in so many of my videos if you want to see me swatch any of the inks, just go back and look at my videos. Um, I have swatched so many inks, but I am going to try to swatch my top 10 picks of all the inks that I'm going to pick out. And some of them I've done just recently. Um, so bear with me. Some of them are not going to be new swatches for people. Um, but nestle in, grab a drink. I'm filming on a Friday late afternoon, early evening. Grab a cocktail beverage if you like, because this one's gonna be a long one. All right, let's dive in. I clearly, clearly like bottles as much as I like ink samples. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out ink samples away from the bottles. And as you can see, lots of ink samples. There's no shortage of them. Some of these are duplicate colors, so they're not all different colors. Um, but I'm going to try to pull out some of my faves from all the samples that I have collected as of late. And then I'm going to try to pick out and show all my bottle inks. All right. Some of them are going to be pretty easy to do, and I might have to do 10 ink samples. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just really hard to like pick just 10 colors. 10 ink samples and then 10 bottle inks because I have so many. Or at least I'm going to do a good swatching of um, some bottled inks. But let's do, I'm just going to like show you the bottles. I think the colors, like I said, I've got them. I even have my coloring swatch books. I've gotten two books of colorings, so I could probably find them. I've got a volume one and a volume two and I can show you what they look like on the swatch cards because if I sit here and swatch all this will be here all day. All right so um, the standard the standard true and true color that I like to do for sketching would be the platinum carbon black. This is one of my favorite inks. It is bulletproof, which means it's once it goes down and it dries, it doesn't budge. It's great for sketching. I'm not swatching this because it's just a black ink. Um, another bottled ink that I absolutely love and I probably have the color swatch for. I mean, it's like absolutely one of my favorite inks ever. So I'm going to just try to find it before I, I should have like flagged my little coloring cards, but I didn't. Um, there's so many good ones and I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. I thought I had this relatively in order. I, okay, I do. Okay. And one of my favorite reds of all time is the Diamine Oxblood. I'm trying to do this and this is what the color looks like. This is one of my favorite inks ever. So that's definitely in the fave inks category. Uh, just general writing. It's really well behaved. And then on the green side, I'm going to go to this one. And this is Jacques Herban Vert's Alanatide. It looks like this. I am finding that I like the color ring for swatching, but I don't think it always renders sheening well. And if you look at the bottom of this jar, there's a lot of sheening in this ink and it just does not show up on the color swatch, but it's one of my top favorite inks. That's three already. Um, I, I'm not, this is not a favorite, but this is one of the inks that I have. This is Edelstein's Topaz. I absolutely love that color. Not a favorite, but I'll show you what that looks like because I have a whole bunch of blues that I really do like. And I'm gonna just try to find this in the card. 
really quick if I can. It's so hard to get through these cards as quickly as possible, and I am trying to be as quick as possible um, in going through these because I just have so much ink. I couldn't believe how much ink I have. I have acquired quite a bit over the time. Um, I don't know if I actually did. Oh, here we go. This is what Blue Topaz looks like from Edelstein. And then a pink that I have that's kind of sitting out here staring me in the face is P.W. Ackerman. This is Den Hog. This is also um, Gourmet Pins. If you watch her on YouTube, this is her pink. And I got this at the DC uh, Pin Show. Now, caveat, I don't like pink like that. <laughs> but I do like this bottle. So I really did get this ink. Not so much for the color but for the bottle and I'm still waiting for my SBR Brown from the Netherlands to arrive. So it must be in the Atlantic, maybe floating out in the port or waiting to clear customs to come into the States, but I haven't gotten it yet, but I love their bottles for PW Ackerman. This is a little bit too much of a hot pink mess. I'm almost tempted to get rid of the color. So if anybody really wants a hot pink, let me know. I'll send it to you um, as soon as I get my SBR Brown. Because my, my goal was going to be to trash the color and keep the bottle because I really love their bottles. And it's a natural ink well too. Okay, so there's the pink bottle of P.W. Ackerman. Um, next, one of my colors that I actually found that I like. It's not in the top 10, but it's close. It's in there. Close is Brunch Date by Colorverse. This is a very unusual kind of pinkish brown color I guess I would say I kind of categorize it that way I like it it's very different um, I got it because it's a unique color it shows up really well on um, off-white not pure white paper and it doesn't do too bad on like a rhodia colored paper and I'm just trying to find the color swatch for it right now because I know I have it in here but I've got some really actually I've gotten some really cool colors over the period of time that I've had stuff let me just see if I can find I'm looking for it French date is just being very elusive for me um, I'm finding some of my other colors really quite nice oh here we go so this is the color verse brunch date and on, on, on pure white paper, it's just a really pretty kind of muted down pink. Unlike P.W. Ackerman, which is really bright, this is more of a really kind of toned down, kind of nice soft pink muted down color. Um, let's see here. Then I have, I won't do this one. I have Grey um, Nage from J. Herbon. So that is just a nice gray ink. I sometimes like to go into my grays for winter. Let me see if I can find it really quick. And probably won't be able to. Uh, Newler's Lexington Gray. I don't know if I swatched the gray. I have a feeling, ah, here we go. That is the gray color of the Herbon Gris. And again, it's got a little bit of a hint of almost purple undertones to it. So that's another really pretty color. And that's J. Herbon. Um, I have my Venta inks. So right now I'm currently writing with Ubi. I think in the last video that I shot, I used Ubi as a color swatch and I actually can probably show you what Ubi looks like on some Tomo River paper because I just got done doing Ubi not too long ago and like I said I've just done a ton of swatches here and I just want to show you what I did 
with the ubi because i think it's just in the middle of a page somewhere and i don't know why it's being elusive but it's being elusive uh the middle gray okay since it's not showing up that's in the purple family and here is the Vinta Ubi. So that's what that looks like. I also have, um, this is Armada by Vinta, and it's a beautiful like blue gray color. And that one, if I go back into my blues, Inventa does make some really cool inks. I actually really do enjoy their colors quite a bit. Let me just go into Blue Topaz. I'm in the blues. I just got to find it. Here we go. This is the Armada by Vinta. And that's a Philippine ink company. Absolutely gorgeous color. Okay, so I've got two Mont Blanc colors that I absolutely love. And these now are part of my top 10 favorites. I've got Around the World in 80 Days. And I've got James Perdue and Sons um, Single Malt. And these colors are absolutely gorgeous and I'm gonna have to relish my single malt because they don't make it anymore but it's an absolute gorgeous orange color and let me just put that in there and I got hooked on that with pins and tea and I'll show you what the um, around the world in 80 days bottle looks like their bottles are absolutely gorgeous from Mont Blanc this color is absolutely a fantastic, nice, rich, navy, indigo blue. Um, I know blues can be kind of boring, but I just really enjoy that. I've actually got it inked up in one of my pens. So let me show you around the world in 80 days and single malt. And... I don't know. I might have to ink that one. Up. Let me see if I put it in. Okay. The good thing is when we get to the ink samples for all the tie of mine Christmas stuff, I've got them separated already, so it won't take as long. And let's just see if I've got around the world in 80 days inked. Otherwise, I will ink that one for you guys so that you can see it because I don't have a card. And it looks like I'm going to have to do that because I don't see anything uh, that's looking like it. Let's see here. CMA, Waterman. Nope, I don't have it. Okay, so let's ink it. Let me just um, grab a swatching card here. Let me grab... A hey, Bomba socks. Why not? They can contribute to the channel. And let me find my swatching pen here. I finally was able to pick up an automatic pen. It took me forever to do so, but I finally have one. And I will go ahead. And do Around the World in 80 Days by Mont Blanc. I could have swore I did this already, but if I haven't, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is Mont Blanc. Let's get that in there. I always want to put an E in there for French, but it's not the right way, and it would be masculine anyhow. Uh, let's do this around the world.
running out of ink, but it has really nice shading properties. Okay, so we'll just do this down here. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love that um, pen, the ink color. Let me just rinse my glass nib off here. Put that in the jar and let's get a little ink sample thing here. And I forgot to grab a paper towel, but I think I've got a napkin right here just because I dipped into the top part of my automatic pen. Still trying to get used to using this. Pins and uh, Mystery Arts and Crafts uses hers all the time, and I all, I just thought this would be a cool way to actually swatch without. But it's just like it is nice, vibrant blue. It's really pretty. Just got to get used to dispatching the blue ink out on my little card here. So I'll put that one into that, and as you can see. It's an absolute gorgeous color. Just really, really pretty. So I will add that to the collection of my cards and we can get rid of the Bama. Sorry about uh, that, that was very impromptu swatch. So I wasn't prepared to actually have to do any swatches, but you understand, you understand. Okay, so um, that is Around the World in 80 Days. And this also is, um, I think, a limited edition from uh, Mont Blanc. And so I had to get it because once it's gone, it's, it's gone. You can't get it anymore. So those are two of my other favorite inks that I really do enjoy. I think I'm up to five inks already, and I've still got quite a few bottles to go. Um, I've got Tukushi uh, ink from Pilot. This is an Irujuku ink. Uh, and I've got to come back into frame, go back out again a little bit. Um, really like this ink as well. So that is a brown. I think it used to be called horsetail, but I'm not exactly sure. So if anybody knows, please let me know because I, I used to have a brown from them and I thought it was called horsetail. But that is what the brown ink looks like from Pilot. Very well behaved ink. Not one of my top tens, but it's a very good ink. The other ink that I have from Pilot is Shinkai. Um, I forgot I had these little tiny bottles, but I do. And Shinkai looks like this. And it's another well-behaved ink. I find Pilot inks to be a little bit though on the watery side. Um, Shiku Ren is one of my favorite Pilot inks but not in my top 10 anymore. Um, but it is definitely up there in my list. And that is a green. So let me just go through and find that green. Okay. And it always reminds me of bamboo and green of spring, like the early part of spring when the greens are starting to pop. Really beautiful color. Then I have Murasaki Shibiku, I hope I'm not butchering my Japanese names here. It's another Irizunko ink from Pilot. And it is in purple. And that color is, let me find that one. Passed it up before so I know it's in here. And let's see here. And that is the purple for that pilot color. Not that dynamic, but um, it's just a good solid purple, but it's not my fave. And then I have Fuyu Sayogun. Sayogun. I love this color. Now this is one of my more favorite uh, gray inks. And this is from Pilot as well. And that ink is right here. It just reminds me of like stormy weather, 
on a winter on a winter day you know it's just I think it's a really pretty um, gray color okay so this ink is new in my arsenal and this is for drawing and sketching and this is um, Royer and Klinger's sketch ink and this is in a gray and I only have two kind of what I would call drawing inks, so they're both my favorite because of the purpose of once you lay them down and it dries, this is Tia, um, it will be there. It's not going to go anywhere, so let me show you what that one looks like. And I'm hoping that I have that one inked up, and I don't think I do actually. So I would have to do another ink sample of that one. Let's see here. Yeah, that one has also not been inked up. So let me do a swatch card of that one again. And let me find a different sheet of paper for you guys instead of looking at the uh, Bama's mail advertisement that has arrived in my house. Hold on just a second. I'm going to go ahead and just use the Toma River paper insert that I have here. And let me, oops, let me lay this down like this so the page doesn't fly up. Rinse off my automatic tool here. And this time I will start with the automatic tool. The blue ink from that last swatch made my, my water extremely blue, so I'm hoping that I don't pick up too much blue tint. All right, let me uh, just orient here for just a second. off a lot darker than a gray um, on this and there's that and then what I'll do is dip and swatch and let me zoom in here come down here I, hope I, sp I think I spelled this wrong. I think it's R O H E R. And clear. This is Tia. And um, this is Sketch Ink. really a nice color actually um, so that is that ink color and so that is more of my sketching ink stuff let me zoom back out and what I will do is let that dry because it is really wet when it comes off of the automatic pen okay so let's move forward I've got um, Kyoto Auto Note um, Okay, I'm not really sure what this color is um, because I put it in <laughs> on a sticker that is hard to read what it is. But um, if anybody knows what this color is, it looks like that. It's kind of a burnt orangish color. It's the looks the look of the bottle in the front. That is a absolute nice color so let me just see if I can find Kyoto Oto note Kyoto Oto let's see here mm. it's not looking good for the home team here I think I have not swatched this one, but I could have swore that I have. 
I'm not going to swatch it because I'll let you see what the color is on the top there. But that's what it looks like. If anybody really wants to see it, I'll do a separate video on any of the inks if you guys want me to do a deeper dive. Just say Kyoto Note because this is the only one that I have of that. And I've got so many more <laughs> to get to. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of skip that if I've got the swatch sample on the top. Um, next, I have my um, Monte Verde inks. So I've got I Nova that I got as a special edition when I bought the special edition pen with flex nib. I also have the video for that. I'll try to link it up above in the corner. I've got the Olivine ink and the Copper Noir. And the Copper Noir is absolutely gorgeous. So let me show you what they look like going from left to right. I'll work my way backwards. So the... Diamine Ancient Copper, which I absolutely love using it in fall, looks like this. So there's that ink, and it is one of my favorite inks. So I'm to ink number six on <laughs> bottles already. Um, so there's that one. Uh, let's see if I can find the Inova, which is kind of like a purplish color. Uh, let's see if I can find that one. And am I going to run into any luck with that? Uh-oh. I don't know if I'm going to have it swatched. I felt like I did it a long time ago. It's been a while since I've done that color. But that color is a bluish... Oh, sorry about that. It's a bluish uh, purple color, purple gray color. And I'll tell you what. I might not swatch the card, but I will definitely give you a swatching sample, at least on paper. And I'll do that for the Kyoto note since I said I wasn't going to swatch it on a card. So I'll just do these if I could unscrew this. So I'll do the Kyoto note first, and then I'll do um, the Montverde one. And I'll just use my automatic pen so that you can see what the colors look like at least. Okay, so um, the Kyoto Note, that color is beautiful. And that's what that color looks like. It's absolutely stunning. <laughs> so that's that one. And, um, and I'll the lid back on because I don't want to spill. And then for the Mount Verde Inova, that color looks like this. And it's going to take a while for that to dry too. Um, so... Oops, uh, I grabbed the wrong one. That's that color. And I'll hold it up so you guys can see it after I'm done. Uh, swatching these out really quick. Just got some water over here. I'm going to just rinse off my glass nib and um, put these to the side really quickly. So I definitely have a thing about um, really rich oranges, nice burnt colors. And this is the Mont Verde. Uh, Mont Verde. And this one is the Inova. This was a special edition that came out with the pen. And that one is absolute. And this is actually a really well-behaved ink, I think. Um, so I will hold that up to the camera so that you guys can see what that looks like. And I'm using um, Goulet pens. I'm using their, their um, Tomo River notebooks that they had from years gone by 
This is what the inks look like. I'm going to zoom back out and then bring it into you so you can see. And as you can tell, the paper's not dry. So I'm going to just kind of put that over here to the side and I'll bring them back uh, later on. And then next I have up um, another couple of bulletproof inks that I actually really do enjoy and I actually use them quite a bit. And that is 54 Massachusetts, which is like a blue color from Noodler's and Noodler's um, Lexington Gray. And sometimes I will mix these two together for my own um, custom blend. And I just absolutely love the blue gray colors. They're not going to make my top 10 list, but they're in my top 20 by far because I actually do use these inks a lot. And it's great for work um, so that, you know, if you're laying down anything or even travel, like if you're going through elements, I find my bulletproof inks, as I like to call them, my Noodlers, um, the Carbon Black, and even the Royer and Klinger, they're dreams because they, you know, if they get wet, they're not going to ruin uh, necessarily or smear all over the place. So I have those two inks and I should have ink samples on both of these. So let me show you um, Noodler's 54 Massachusetts and then I'll show you Lexington Gray. And I'm just trying to find the blue sections in my card here. Because um, I know that I have it. And is this my Noodlers? Oh, that's a different one. Okay, well, I might have Lexington Gray and I don't have 54 Massachusetts, but it's a blue ink. And actually, I'll show you what they look like on the top because um, they are kind of blue and gray inks. That's the colors for each one of them. I just got done seeing Lexington Gray, but I haven't seen 54 Massachusetts. Okay, here is what Lexington Gray looks like. It's a nice warm gray color, unlike um, the cooler version of my Irizuku ink from um, Pilot. This is a little bit warmer than that one, just a little bit. Um, let me see if I can see any more that oh and this is what the inova ink looked like i did have it splotched up already i thought i did it's almost like a black uh let's see here i have any more 54 okay i don't all right so those are a couple more of my near and dear but not quite on my favorite list okay i've got another orange ink that is <laughs> on my favorite ink list especially in fall and that is diamine autumn oak i absolutely love this color um it is a beautiful color let me show you what that ink color looks like and let me see if i can find my oranges really quick ah so many inks it's crazy I wonder if anybody's got the same problem that I do with having just a ton of ink colors. That is, oh, that's Copper Noir, I'm sorry. I showed you that one already. Uh, Autumn Oak, where you at? Uh, Apache Sunset, uh, Autumn Oak. That is Diamine Autumn Oak. <laughs> is a stellar color and especially when it comes to the fall um, so that's another bottle ink that i have and i do keep my inks um, just i have them out sitting out um, in the open so i do kind of keep the boxes for some of these inks two other colors that i liked from diamine that are bottled inks i have robert and I have marine and these are high sheening inks of life <laughs> these two ink colors sheen like crazy I absolutely love the effect but I'm also um, selective about what fountain pens I tend to stick them in like I'm not gonna stick it in my custom pilot custom a23 um, 
So let me show you what those look like. Marine and... Uh, okay. So Marine is a very blue color with purple sheen qualities and properties. So that is this one. That is what the color looks like. I'm hoping that you can see some of the sheening on that. It's an absolute stunner color. So that's marine. And put that back. Robert is deceptive because it looks like it's going to be purple. If you look at the bottom of this, it looks like it's going to be purple, but when it dries, it goes kind of green. Um, I was kind of bummed about it. I was hoping that it goes green and then it goes kind of purple, but it did the um, reverse. So let me show you what that color looks like because it is very unique in how it does its properties. So let me get out of here. I know I have Robert in here. I just got to locate the card I should have actually lined up all the cards by the bottles but it was like I was trying to shoot this before the Sun goes down <clears throat> and I just was not on top of it that way and let's see if I can find it really quick I found Oxblood uh, let's see here I cannot find Robert. So I'm going to, ah, I did find, this is what 54 Massachusetts looks like in Noodlers. Okay, so that was that one. And I knew I had it, I just didn't know where it was. Um, this is gonna take me just a second and I apologize for the delay. Okay. Every time I think I find it, and I'm like, aha, and then it's like, nope, that's not it. Lots of cards to go through. Uh, too many cards to go through. Okay. I'm going to just swatch it for you on the paper, and then that way you'll see it, because I thought it was convenient and handy and I'll probably see it while I'm flipping through other colors because that's just how this is going. Ah, just found it. So it lays down kind of uh, like a fuchsia pink, but as you can see it has some green shading properties hopefully. I'm going to see if I can get more light on the subject here. But the sun has already swung around. And I may not be able to, so let me just go ahead. Pull out a light. And see if I can shed some more light on the situation. Sorry, we've got an ambulance going by. Uh-oh, a little bit too close to home. Yep. All right, this might give me more light. So there's the sheening properties of Robert. All right, so that's what that one looks like. And we're finally at the last bottle of ink that's in a package. And that is my most recent acquisition from Ferris Well Press. And that is Stroke of Midnight. I love this color and it is a shimmer and sheening ink as well. 
um, let me see if I've got this it is a blue with like gold flecks so let me see if I have that one lined up and I may not have done a card but I should have let's see too many inks am I the only one that has a problem with inks or do other people have like just <laughs> a crap ton of ink that they just like oh my god I've got a problem because mine's runneth over it has runneth over um, and while I'm kind of looking for this I will have to say this um, it's like towards the end of February um, this year I am moving so at points I'm going to probably be cutting out and being a little absent but Please bear with me. Um, I've got. I won't be posting a video for the end of the month of February. I'm going out of town, um, but I will be back and I will start posting again in March. So I will try to get back into schedule and get back into the flow as soon as possible. I am dipping right now. I'm going to write it down first. I thought I did this already, but if I haven't, I'll do it here. So this ink is called. Uh, this is fair make sure I can zoom in here this is Ferris will press and the ink is stroke of midnight and it is absolutely a stunner I'm gonna go ahead and redip this in here Yeah, I bought this after I said, oh, I don't need any more ink. I got all these ink samples from Christmas time. <laughs> Not. I saw the Mont Blanc in this one, and I was like, I have to have it. Okay, so that's what the colors look like for the Ferris Will Press. And let me give you a very chunky swatch so that you can really understand why I love this color so. And I can't wait for it to dry so you can hopefully see all the properties of it because it's absolutely gorgeous. That is what the color looks like. What? So we'll just give it a few minutes. The other colors are still drying. So they are very fairly wet inks. But that is Stroke of Midnight. I should probably have done a swatch card. Um, let me go ahead and do one really quick because I do have to stick it in my collection regardless as it tends to expand and grow um, but yeah this is gonna be a year probably where I don't buy a ton of fountain pens just because I'm, I do have to move um, so I will be trying to come up with other creative ways to express my love of journaling and fountain pens and inks um, so if you have any suggestions or you want me to show you anything um, in the regard, just let me know and I'll try to accommodate because I'm always looking for feedback to help my channel grow. Um, but yeah, I went on a nice healthy tear in the last couple of years. It's been a good run, but I've got to kind of scale back. Uh, let's see here. So this is, I'm sorry, I'm doing this all off the camera. I'm sorry about that. I think I might have to grind my uh, glass knit tip a little bit. It's kind of a little wonky. I'm not really showing off the writing properties as well. And this ink, I think, is a fairly wet one. So there is Stroke of Midnight. My other ink samples cards are still, <laughs> they're still drying, so they're really wet. Um, but I do find that the automatic pen does make for a better way to swatch than me kind of killing through all my Q-tips. I want to go and get 
use one of them and it's like I think I like use most of them just for swatching okay so there's that so now I've got a whole rack load and these I will not swatch <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go blowing through these really quick because there's so many ink samples it's just kind of crazy how many ink samples I have um, I started off I got this at Goulet pens and I started off and I was just fine and I was really kind of surprised excuse me I was really kind of surprised that I actually had even at that time and I've had this now for a few years that I was almost able to fill up this whole entire thing at the time now I've got duplicates like this is the Robert Ulster thunderstorm um, I've got Sailor, Shikori, um, Shimono inks. So I've got a lot of these blues. Um, I think what I'm going to do, just to save time, I'm going to do a second part because <laughs> this video has already been really, really long and I do appreciate sticking with me. Um, so I'll tell you right now, I'll do the what are my top favorite bottled inks and then I'll do another video later on my top sample inks because I have just a crap ton. So it is going to be Stroke of Midnight by Ferris Wheel Press. I absolutely love this color. I would say it's also my two Mont Blancs. So I've got James Perdue and Sun and Around the World in 80 Days. That's three. I'm going to get, try to get this down to a relatively short list. Um, I like my Vinta inks. These are two of my favorite Venti inks. So I've got um, Armada and Ubi. That's five. I'm not gonna include my sketching inks because they're very specifically purposed. Six would be my Vert Atlantide by Jacques Herban. And then I would say, um, let's see here. Yeah, I would say Colorverse, okay? So I would say one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Okay, these are my top seven favorite inks of all time that I have in my collection so far. So that's it. Let me know if you like my selection. Oh, nope, I gotta do eight because I actually, I'm <laughs> sorry. I love Diamine Oxblood. It is my favorite red. So these are my top <laughs> favorite inks. I should probably just go ahead and do two more and just call it the day since I'm already at eight and do 10. Then I would say if I'm going to do 10, I told you I'm all over the place in this video. I warned you. Copper Noir, because I do really like the Mont Verde Copper Noir. I think it's absolutely a gorgeous color. And actually, let me show you what the inks are looking like on the dry sample. So this is Kyoto Note and, um, this is the um, Mount Verde Anova. Um, that was a special edition. It really looks different with me putting that down. I actually like this Kiono note. And this is because it's kind of pulling through only because I swatched so heavy on the Toma River paper. Um, yeah, I would say, actually, I would stop here. I'm actually good. Two, four, six, eight, <laughs> nine. I have nine favorite inks. I probably should say 10, but I'm going to stop here. These are my top nine inks um, for my bottle collection. These are the ones that I absolutely really, really do adore and love. Um, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you liked my my choices or not. Um, if you've got any that are not shown so far that you would like to recommend to me, I'm not going to get them quite yet. Um, I really do want to kind of go through what I have, but um, let me know. I might buy an ink sample, but I'm just not going to try to buy a bottled ink. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time and your patience. Um, and thank you for sticking with me and making it to the end. If you did so, please give the video a thumbs up. If you liked it, um, leave any comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible until the next time. Stay safe, stay healthy and take care. Bye.